Now that we've talked about the different aspects of working load limit and minimum braking strength, um, we really want to understand why those are important. All right, and the reason that they're important is because we know that every material fatigues, whether it's aluminum or steel. And we know that each of these materials becomes weaker over time when it's loaded too high. Okay? So when, when we start talking about fatigue, we want to be aware of the different mechanical properties of the connector, such as steel or aluminum, but then also you know, the safety factors, the working load limits, and the minimum braking strength, because they're all a function of each other. A really easy way to demonstrate or to think about um, fatigue is to think about pull, pulling your finger you know, at a thousand pound load. If you pull it once, it's probably going to pop off. It's going to break off. Our connective tissues aren't really designed for that sort of loading. But if you pull your finger a thousand times at a one pound load, then it's, gonna, it's not going to pop off the first time, the second time, the third time. But once you go through those, those repeated cycles, it's going to get weaker, weaker, and weaker, and probably close to that 1,000th time, your finger is going to pop off. So that's, that's a really similar concept that we're trying to get across with the, with the material fatigue, is that you know, when, you, when you go multiple cycles or higher loads, you're actually, you could potentially be weakening the material and you know, creating stresses that or loads that you're not really um, comfortable with. Um, another aspect to, to think about, you know, and we choose different connectors based on the situation that we're, we're going to be using them in, is tri-loading. You know, tri-loading is a fairly misunderstood concept within the slackline community, so we thought we'd spend a little bit of time just uh, expanding on the concept a little bit. Carabiners, for example, um, are really common, commonly used in slacklining. Um, the unfortunate part about that is they're really only um, intended to be loaded in a particular way, and that's along the spine here. Okay, so the way these are loaded, or meant to be loaded, is a direct linear pull like this. Okay, when we get into tri-loading, Tri-loading actually means that we're creating multiple vectors, or th at least three vectors, on, on the carabiner. So we can have one load here, and then a load coming out this way, and a load coming out this way. And it's really important to understand this, how these loads or these vectors are, are put on the equipment, because when you start doing that, you move the, you move the, the load from the back of the spine to the gate, which is where it's not really designed to be taken. So when you start tri-loading, you can effectively reduce you know, the stated minimum braking strength by a pretty significant amount. Okay? So these, these, these two concepts, the, the you know, material fatigue and tri-loading, are really important to understand when you're choosing a, a proper connector for you know, your specific situation. So another important aspect to, to consider is material choice. When we're looking at uh, connectors, we have the options between steel and aluminum. Um, within the slack line community, there's been a lot of debate recently, actually within the past couple of years, as to the appropriateness of aluminum within slack line systems. Um, when it comes down to it, both steel and aluminum are incredibly strong materials. They can be applied in many different scenarios. The, the key thing to look at is whether or not that particular device or that particular connector was designed for that particular purpose that you're going to be using it for. So it's not really a, a question of aluminum is bad or you know, steel is better or anything like that. It's just if you're using a device or, or a connector, it really needs to be designed for that specific use.